Hey everyone, we're live, pal. We're in Las Vegas at the F4W convention. Uh, how many hours until Double or Nothing? 24. 24 hours before Double or Nothing. 23. 23. Yep. Dave Meltzer. Clearly we have Dave here. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Meltzer, Brian Alvarez here with Andrew and I. Uh, and I guess uh, first thing we should probably talk about, uh, Rampage. We all went to Rampage. Uh, that was, a, I thought it was a fun hour of Rampage. I'm mm -hmm. sure some people, you know, left before Dark's, you know, ended like, like we did. Yeah. But, um, I've been to two Rampages, but they've always been the pre-pay-per-view Rampage. They put, they seem to put a little bit more of an effort into the pre-pay-per-view one. Well, it's a hard sell night. Yeah. So, yeah. But I, 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 I thought it was a fun show. The Young Bucks coming out as the Hardys was really fun. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Ruby Soho beat Chris Statlander and became a heel in one night. Yeah, one of those things. The crowd decided um, pretty early on. It's probably the promo. The Chris Stan it was really interesting because the whole thing, because sort of the same thing Adam Page did as well, is that there's this conflict between the original AEW stars who built the company and then the people who came later to jump on when it was already a success. And then it's kind of like the ones that were there first kind of feel like we've waited our turn. And then these other people you know, got above us. And so Chris kind of put that out in the promo. And then also she looked very good in the match. She wrestled a really good match. And, and I like the I new look that, too. Yeah. The new yeah, look I works think that a lot. She's always been more over than her push. Well, she, and, was, she was doing well until her knee injury. And yep. then she kind of like lost her spot in a lot of ways. Yep. And then, uh, I mean, if you watch the match, the fans were, they wanted her to win. Yeah. But when, when Ruby won, everybody initially popped but then you could hear like there was a smattering of booze, and I thought, "Wow, that's a mixed reaction." But man, as soon as they started that promo after the match, oh my god, yeah, these got... fans all decided we don't like this Ruby Soho. So now, but I they mean, were, they were doing the the yay boo spot, and they were booing Ruby yeah. because I I remember like it was um, a couple minutes into the match where I was like, "They need to call an audible." It wasn't at the end after it happened. It was like they need to call an audible. I knew they wouldn't because you just don't do that these days now. And I know, and historically, you never do it. But I just thought, like, this crowd really wants Chris Statlander to win. And they popped big for her promo. And then when she didn't win, they they took it out on Ruby Soho. And they may on, they made tomorrow as well. Well, yeah, I think if, because Britt is a heel. But, they have, so, but everybody likes her. Yes, but if, if Britt were going to win the tournament, then you may as well call an audible because it doesn't matter. Right. I think Ruby's winning the tournament, and therefore they didn't want to call an audible. Well, then that's even worse because they well, still yeah, want well, her to win the tournament. Right, but now, but now it's like if she wins the tournament, she's going to be even more of a heel. Well, I mean, they're and she to tried to turn that crowd when she was cutting that promo. She kept saying, "Chris is one of my best friends." Right, and it only made it worse. And it only made it worse yeah. the whole time. Okay, do you think that they kind of set it up like this, though, maybe unintentionally, when? Ruby and Velvet Sky did the thing on on Dynamite because Ruby was like, "Yeah, maybe I'll you know take your advice or something about the knee or the injuries." Remember, she said that thing uh, at yeah, the yeah, end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Red Velvet. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah, Velvet. Sorry. Um, okay, so uh, overall, uh, again, fun show. We got the great Brian Danielson and and Matt Seidel match, and then the Young Bucks thing, which Andrew and I were kind of cracking up about because that was as good of a Hardy Boys 2000 version that I've ever seen, even from the Hardy Boys almost. It was well, like they... it was sort of because Nick went out and decided he was going to be the best Jeff Hardy ever. And then <laughs> Matt went out and decided that he was going to make fun of Matt Hardy and fall down <laughs> yeah. and trip and bumble around. So they actually did two completely different things at the match. And uh, it was awesome. the crowd ate it up. I mean, yeah. it, it was awesome. It, it's, it's actually shocking. I mean, the joke is always the comparison to like yeah. the Rockers or like to the Hardys. It is shocking how they they looked like the Hardys. I think I, if I mean, Nick every had way. shaved the beard, they may have fooled a lot of that audience for like a, a little bit. They fooled of, me for like second. a second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So the story going around today is that at the Fan Fest, uh, I saw people posting about it. MJF no showed the fan fest. There was a line of people. Well, it definitely happened. They got yeah. mad. They had to refund or whatever. What I mean, we don't. I, I don't we don't we know. know a lot of, of there's the a million. There's a million different things that this could be, and we really don't know. Um, and you know, I don't. I don't. I don't want to go speculate on the wrong things. So it's kind of like, but there's obviously something, and uh, you know, it, it's. I guess we'll find out how it plays out tomorrow. 
I mean, if it is a work, how far do you take it? It's not a work. You have to give credit to people. You know, that's a work. It's not a work. It's not a work. You're not going to do that to the fans. Okay, so knowing. You said you didn't want to speculate. I'm just like thinking, like, what is the worst scares, case scenario speculate. for this show? Well, the worst right? case scenario is he, he doesn't, doesn't show up. He doesn't right. Show up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And for, you know, I, I just think if the play is about the contract, that stuff is okay, but it's way too early in the game because the contract doesn't expire for a little while, you know, 2024. 2024. Yeah, but a lot of those guys signed that initial deal without having that stuff. I mean, MJF from the time that he signed to now has exploded, you know? Yeah. I, I think everybody knew how good he was, but I, I think, like, on paper... No, on TV, he, didn't, he didn't have the value n- then that he had now at all, at all. I mean, when he first came in, he was... There were people who knew about him and everything like that, but they didn't see... I I mean, there might have been people who saw that he could be at this level, but he wasn't, he wasn't proven at all. And his leverage is really high because he's one of their stars. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just interesting. The timing and everything... You know, I guess it, we should not be surprised based off of, you know, just wrestling and the the I mean, amount of money that that is out there right now. But um, yeah, so we'll have to see tomorrow. But I I, I imagine this is going to be a giant story one could, way or another. It could be a giant story, or yeah. it could be not a giant story. It's going to be a story because he no showed the fan fest. Yep. But I mean, they could but work it all it, out, and he could show up tomorrow, yeah, do yeah, the but, match, but do the you know, job. Yeah, yeah, but but you know what? It's still a story in a different way. It is. It is definitely a story. It's and, a, it's and a, it's I, a, I mean, obviously, if you're because, a big star and they feel like they could make money off of you, WWE is going to use MJF. Oh, of course. But at the same yeah. time, you really don't want, especially after the the Sasha and Naomi thing, you don't want them thinking you're a pain in the ass. So there is that aspect of it as well. Yeah, but. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm sure he's positioning it to them like in a way he's probably telling them exactly what they want to hear and so that's not going to be an issue at all. They're yeah. going to they're going to go and hear the MJF version of the story if in fact he's talking to them and you know it, it'll be he'll say what they want to hear cuz they want to hear oh you know whatever and they'll justify it in that mind. You know just like you know you can go with like the Jeff Hardy and AEW, you know, you could go in there and go, oh, you know, they fired Jeff Hardy for this, you know, for alleged, you know, being loaded and everything. But Jeff and Matt, I'm sure, told Tony what he wanted to hear. And he came in, and, and Jeff's had no problems in AEW. Well, the other issue with that one is is he, from from the day it happened, was like, you know, show the drug test results, show the drug test results. Yeah. And they didn't have a positive drug test result. So at the end of the day, like, if, if he had walked out through the crowd and quit been, and had a positive drug test, I don't think they would have hired him. Well, you, the fact that he didn't have a positive yeah. drug test, they made a mistake, and so they hired him. Yeah, but you could always say it was alcohol anyway and not drugs. You could, yeah. You know, so I don't, you know, whatever that means. But, I mean, the point is, is that, but, and again, that's not, not just AEW and whatever. It's like, historically, when it comes to stuff like this, you know, when guys walk out or whatever, there's always companies lining up if you're a big enough star. If you're like a, you know, if you're a prelim guy, people will go up. We don't need trouble from a prelim guy. But if you're a main event star, especially with the other side, and we can take you from the other side, everyone's going to do it. They'll bend over backwards to do it, really. You know, rather than say, oh, he was a problem there. You know, you know, he'll be a problem here. You know, it, everyone thinks that when you come to the new company, I mean, Tony took guys that were considered pro- pro- um, problems elsewhere and had no problems with them. And, and you know, so... Punk. What? <laughs> punk. In eventing tomorrow. Well, yeah, well, but, but Punk, Punk did, you know, if you look at it, I mean, Punk didn't do anything bad, bad, but... Punk dissed them bad in 2019. I mean, it wasn't unprofessional, and he didn't walk out on them. He was on ESPN. But he, well, he interviewed with the Mark Romanda interview. He kind of blew him off, you know, and, and there's people who still resent that to this day, that he came in and, you know, and now he's in the main event. But at the same time, it's like business. He's the biggest star in the company. He should be in the main event. He should be champion. I mean, I'm not saying he should be champion tomorrow. I mean, I would do it later. Uh, but, I mean, he could if he wins it tomorrow, it's not the wrong choice either. Okay, Andrew. Yes, sir. After Tony's tweet last night about... Is the, the building tweet? About the building. And the dinner with Dana and White. dinner with Dana yeah. White. WWE's probably kind of smiling internally after this MJF thing, right? I don't know. I mean, it depends. If, they, if, they, if they're in the know of something with the MJF thing, I think they are. I, they definitely would want him. I, I can't see them ever not wanting him. And what a great acquisition that would be for them for that story. Look how little this company pays their talent that they, within two years of a three-year deal or whatever, the, they're, they're pissed off and they're no-showing stuff. Uh, I, I mean, this is a great PR story for them. 
You know, they, they love this kind of stuff. But at the end, I mean, we don't know what it's going to lead to. Yeah. Yeah, but it, unless he goes and outright fires him um, and then hands him to WWE, because that's, that's, that's what firing would do. Right. Um, legally, he's going to have his hands tied, you know, in theory until 2024. Um, then there's the situation. If that happens, I mean, do you work out? I don't know. You know, then you got the Sasha Banks, Naomi thing. You don't see how long, because that's a big thing. How long can WWE ice them? Um, with only a couple months left on their deals, too. Well, I don't at know least Sasha, Naomi. Was, Naomi, Naomi, Naomi at least had two months. Na- yeah. Naomi, Naomi's two months, yeah. Um, yeah, but if they free, but they can freeze her. Yeah. She, didn't, she didn't come to work. You know, because that's what happened with Danielson. I mean, Danielson had a three-year contract that lasted seven years because they froze him. You know, and he when, didn't realize it, right? Like, he didn't realize until it came to, to find out that they had frozen it because they, they didn't tell him. I don't know what they did. Did I mean originally when he wanted to get out, he knew he was frozen and he was screwed and he was trying to think of ways out. At later, when he thought his deal was up, um, they it was frozen for another. It, it, he had another year that was still frozen on, so he saw, signed the new three year deal because the new deal they offered him was a great deal and it's just easier. And then I'm trying to know. think of the contract software they use that says freeze the deal, mm-hmm. and then it adds another thing on. It just keeps adding. <laughs> yeah. It keeps turning. Uh, okay, so in the Observer, we didn't get to do our normal Friday night show, so which we kind of talk about all the big stories in the Observer. Uh, but you had a thing on the ratings for April, mm-hmm. and so uh, you know, in in some instances, uh, Raw was looking okay, but AEW, especially with younger people, under thirty five, AEW was looked looked excellent. But from thirty five to forty nine, they did not grow, and women were down. And over fifty, everyone's the same. It's like a whole year happened. And pretty much it's like, you know, even NXT, which from a quality standpoint has dropped like crazy, it's essentially the same number of people are watching that NXT um, over 50 as we were a year ago. Now, in, under 50, you know, NXT is way, way down across the board. Um, AEW's up under 35, which is, it's a good thing. But it is interesting because people will, they did, they did stagnate 35 to 49 and women 35 to 49 are down. Um, but women 18 to 34 are, are significantly up. Yeah. So, you know, what that means, I mean, it's just an it's interesting thing because every group has a different thing that they watch wrestling for and that it appeals to. And you have to kind of like, you know, sometimes you sacrifice one for the other. In many ways, you, you would sacrifice one for the other. But it's it is interesting to see how that works out. Um, you know, the, for total viewers, the key number is the over 50. But it's also the least value because you're getting ad money based on the 18 to 49, because the teenagers don't help you with the ad money. But, but in theory, you know, growth with teenagers is good because it seems to portend better for your future. So I guess uh, one of the surprises of the Q&A, which should be uh, on the YouTube channel uh, soon, is Brian saying how he kind of enjoyed NXT 2.0. Can you please explain? Just like, or in general. Just in general. Can you please explain this? Listen, I need some excitement in my life. It's bright. The show's horrible, okay, for the most part. <laughs> But uh, I had I had years when WCW was horrible, so you know there was that. Then I had years where TNA was horrible, so there was that. And then you know there were years from about 2018 on that the WWE kind of fell off a cliff. And uh, now I got an XT 2.0, so you know it's uh, it's it's material. But I do look forward to the show. I don't know why. Like there's there's characters on there that I I enjoy. And I think, you know, some people are doing better than you would expect given their level of experience. And it is doing, the future of the, the company. Tiffany's, yeah, you're, you're, you're looking at the future, and some of them are going to make it. Yeah, and, a lot and of people them, don't most of them like won't. to hear about NXT 2.0, but I don't think people understand that, like, this is the future of the company. Like, this is what it's going to be. Yeah. They, they're not going after indie guys anymore. Whatever you see on NXT 2.0 is the future of the main roster. Yeah, the problem. It's people that got hired because of how they look, crash course in wrestling, Thrown on TV too early. That's the and problem. And moved up to the main roster. The problem is, is that you never get a second chance to make a first impression, no. and they should not be putting these people. A lot of these people should just not be on TV. They're not ready. Lash for TV. Legend is not ready for television. Not at all. Not at all. No. Tiffany Stratton is. I mean, she's fine she's, for what they're doing there, she, but she's not ready. She's she's way advanced for what her experience and number of yes. matches are, but she is she's not ready in the ring unless she's in there with a real vet. 
Yes, and the other thing is, like, the other thing that's interesting... And about, they don't have real vets in there to carry these younger women. No, and that's even, problem. even the matches that are better than you would think, it's like, that was a match that they sat at the Performance Center, and they practiced for three weeks, <laughs> yeah. and then they went and did it on television. You get called up to the main roster, and it doesn't matter if they say, next week on Raw, uh, Lash Legend is going to face Nikita Lyons. Changes. They really don't have a week. They have that afternoon yeah. because something is going to change, and and they're, oh, and they're not being and they're gonna, prepared. And they're, and they're going to get their time changed three times that afternoon too. Yeah, probably. like the, the, the yeah. see the thing with the old NXT was the complaint was these people aren't being prepared for the main roster. But if you watch NXT 2.0, which is supposed to be a better preparation for the main roster, they are not being prepared for the main roster. They are not being prepared to show up and being told three hours before the show that your match has changed, or being told as you're going out that you have less time. They're not being trained for any of that, so I uh, I watch it with a, a perverse <laughs> well, I enjoy sense it. of uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy it because it is a look into the future. It and is, there, and there are new people, and there are new people coming on every week. And I'm always looking at like who is going to make it, who's got the potential, and and you know I find it interesting. You know, the same reason with New Japan, I love watching the Young Lions matches. Like you know, whenever, whenever but those matches in. are miles. Miles Yeah, because better. they're trained differently. Yes. But it's like, I'll look at like... They're trained better. Yeah, but I'll look at like from the start when Yui Uri Murray starts, and now he's like a little further advanced. But it's like, hey, this guy, like like these guys, these guys are, some of these guys are going to make it. You know, their percentage of guys who are going to make it. You know what I mean? It's, it's a great argument that like, if you have like 10 people in developmental and you just focus, 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 like the young lions, most of them make it. When you have like 60 or 70, I guess the idea is, is that by percentage, more of them would make it, but I don't see by percentage more of them making it. I don't. Just throwing I, darts. I mean, yeah. I mean, I see New Japan making more stars than WWE, and they hardly train that many guys. Yeah, I, I, I watch and I look at the way that they do things, and I mean, as a wrestler, this idea that we so, can somebody who took a bump who, today yeah, in the actually, ring, yes. a cutter, right? Yeah. Debbie Malenka. But anyway, as someone who wrestled, <laughs> when I look at the way that they, they talk about everything like oh we'll we'll take a good looking person who is an athlete playing basketball oh, yeah. and man we can make him a wrestler like this idea that we can make anybody a wrestler but most of the times those fa they fail most of the time that's my point it's insulting the idea that they think that they could just take anyone who's an athlete and make them a it's wrestler it's not just athlete they want good looking good body yes, athlete yes you know but... they because because there are athletes that probably are not good looking and they would just go like you know, he can't make it you know, even if they're fan better athletes than the ones yeah. that they choose. They're choosing athletes based on body and based on being good looking. Well, not only that, it's like you, you're you're expect you're telling me that you can make anyone a wrestler. And then you're also saying every six months we're gonna evaluate you, and if you aren't where we think that you should be, like you're out of there. Yeah. And it's like no one's touring, no one's doing shows that are gonna apparently start. Well, they're gonna but, start just start in a few weeks, yeah. Do you know how many great wrestlers? If they went into this system, all time greats, it would fail. And they Tons. had you're you're, you're oh, oh, oh. only going to go through these drills. You're going to lift weights, and every six months, if you we don't like what you're doing, we're going to cut you. We would have had nobody. Well, you want to know, like if you, I, I remember this with the, with the power plan. I was thinking about this that if you took all of the great wrestlers that were in the business in the '90s and threw them in the power plant for what the power plant wanted, most of them would have been weeded out in the first week. Be yes, because they would have just you know they they look they weeded out Batista. Yeah. You know, the only, I mean, you had to be Chael, Chael Sonnen survived, but Chael Sonnen was a gutsy, you know, for whatever. But he survived, but he didn't go on to become a great pro wrestler. He went on to become an MMA fighter. That's true. That's true. But, but most of the guys were just there to be weeded out. Now with WWE, they're not trying to weed people out. They're actually trying to make them wrestlers. But, um, you know, so, you know, yeah, it's, it's, I just don't think that, um, I thought the the best system in some ways was the OVW thing where they put him on TV, but nobody saw him outside of Louisville. And even like with and not only that, they were doing six shows a week on this. Still loop. can't see him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. boom, 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 boom. That's right. Have That's... good people come down work with them, do six days. Right, and they're not having they're not having that. We don't see people. I mean, what we did see a few times, and then they dropped that too. Where like, okay, Natalia did work with Cora Jade, but for the general, but it was a three week program. She had one match with her, and she was gone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how long do you think they will give this version of NXT no a chance no well, if it's, they it's, don't make the immediate impact? I mean, how could they with, go back? The how could they go back? Because they told everybody that the old way was not NXT. 
when you talk to anybody there, they tell you that, well, it kind of veered off. This was always going to be the vision. Bright colors well, it, 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 and young. It, it, and... it, it, was, it was the vision until they wanted to fight with Ring of Honor, which turned into a fight with AEW. Yeah. And then they had to fight for the best wrestlers. And then it veered off into something else until they lost the fight with AEW. And once that fight is lost, you might as well go back to what your original vision was. And uh, well, That vision was never really tested, that original vision. We got only a short... It was new, and it was different, and it was something that nobody had seen when, it, when NXT started. You're, you're telling me these unknowns or you know indie guys that come over, you get to see them in their development. That was, a, that was shiny for a lot of people. And, but, but they also did not rush them in the ring. I mean, there, no. there were people who were, in, who were training and training and training for a long period of time. I didn't see people in the... Because I watched the NXT from, in Florida from the very beginning, and... Um, we didn't get like, and the other thing too is, is there were guys like Pac that were there. There were always Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins, T.J. Wilson. I mean, there were always guys there that were. Um, Dan, Brian Danielson was there, you know. Uh, Claudio was there. There were always some really good wrestlers there, along with the guys who they thought were going to be the next big stars, like Kurt Hennig's son, who didn't turn out to be, or you know, whatever. There were always those guys. Whereas now, I mean, it's like. You know, some of these guys have been in the system for just a couple of months, and then they're already on TV, and you know, and uh, and some of them look very green, and some of them, you know, some of them I watch improve every week, which is something to see too. It's something positive. All right, two quick topics before we get out of here because we're on our way to the uh, Texas Day Brazil. Uh, Andrew, you had a comment uh, on Thursday's Matt Men, yes, about Stephanie McMahon. Uh, do you want to? Very bizarre conversation, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I didn't expect that phone call. Uh, I, it was a it was a phone call that kind of veered into a discussion about Steph. Because I asked, you know, I was like, hey, anything I could add to this? What's going on? And, you know, it, some of the comments, I was shocked. Yeah. One being that people internally, and this is coming from someone in the know in WWE. This wasn't like a guy in catering, you know? Just just um, so if people didn't watch yeah. Matt Man, what was the comment? Uh, the comment was that internally there was doubt put on Steph, uh, her abilities as an executive. And a lot of this started after uh, she absorbed some of Michelle, uh, Michelle Wilson's responsibilities after she left, one being ad sales and sponsorship. And uh, the comment that, that I found interesting was that you know, they mentioned that the investors were questioning why they weren't doing, why they weren't performing as well. And internally, there was some questioning as to why that wasn't performing. And I, I think a month ago, uh, Claudine Lillian, I think, Dave? Yeah. And that was her name from Fox. She went over uh, to handle that, and she was released a month ago. Mm. And Nick has taken over all these responsibilities. And I have never, you know, when the Shane issue happened at Royal Rumble, WWE was pretty quick to kind of say, yeah, he was, he got sent home for all the reasons that you heard, mm -hmm. right? I was not expecting the words to be used for Steph because at the end of the day, the McMahons are the McMahons and they're the most protected yeah. people in that company. And I, I mean, I historically, has, have they ever said anything? Well, so, so that's what I was going to ask uh, Dave about. Okay, it. There's, there's a left hand and a right hand here because I'll tell you that I, okay. I mean, like, as far as Steph goes, like if and when she comes back and it won't be soon, there's a you know a real good chance it won't be in the position that she was. It was yeah. said flat out to me. It will not be the same position. It won't be. Yeah. It, it won't be in the same position. But it was interesting because I had talked to somebody about something similar and asked about you know Stephanie in that in that realm and you know certain things were explained why okay this person you know might not um, you know there's people who Stephanie dealt with that but because Vince always had to answer you know she didn't have the power. Yeah. No, nobody does. Vince has all the power. You know, she's someone who talks to Vince, but in the end of the day, Vince is going to make all the decisions. But the, the thing was, and I said, like, you know, there, there's some people who are saying stuff, and, go, and, and the person told me, it's like, it's like uh, if anyone hears that, they're going to be gone. No one can say anything bad publicly about Steph. And it's like, that was, and, and that was like a left hand and a right hand thing. Yeah. Because, you know, you were told in a way because they wanted it out. It was, it was said That's, to me in a way that... yeah. Normally, I, like, if it's, like, a secret thing, like, sometimes they're, like, like, if it's, like, a friendly conversation, they're, like, hey, I'd really appreciate it if you didn't word it this way. This was, uh, I wouldn't say instructive, but it was, it was the words that, that were used in that sentence were, 
pretty it was it was buzzy mm-hmm. so they wanted me to use those terms mm-hmm. uh i i find you listen this is this is the, the company right this is the changing of the guard the old guard and the new guard and we see what what nick has done what nick has created he's brought in a ton of real sports level business executives yes. to that company which is something that they've never had not at this level no no never at this level yeah. and now you know you have i mean even the conversation that i had about how you know like the executive meetings that they hold right Nick is like a senior executive in that company because of all the turnover they've had. I, I you know, there's right, 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 people right. Yeah. left. Yeah, so uh, many people have left. Yeah. So you could see that this is a big change, but now the big story is, okay, so why would, why would that comment be made? There, there's a reason for it. You know, you can speculate all you want. Is it to disconnect the McMahons from the company a little bit? So if there is a sale positioning, uh, it, it's easier on the audience maybe. I mean, this is how my brain is working. Yeah. It's maybe easier on the audience where it's not them, you know, that this is your product is being taken away from you because the McMahons aren't in control. Or it could easily be, you know, get these stories out there to make it easier to change that that old guard mm-hmm. in that company. Very, I, I mean, I was... I was really surprised. And and I hear some wacky things from there from people, <laughs> like crazy, crazy things. I was really shocked to hear that this would happen, this conversation would happen. Right. Okay, last thing. Uh, in The Observer, you had written up the, uh, the Kotobushi story. And then all of a sudden, it was like a 180 yeah. from yesterday. So they had, a, they had a press conference. The company basically they did said every- that they were incorrect in the situation. Boy, boy think, think about this. That is so different from an American company. But the thing is, is that he is a star and, you know, they didn't, they didn't want to lose him. That was, that's the key to this whole thing. Because if it was someone who they thought was expendable, um, no way would he last through this. And um, they badly wanted to keep him, did everything they could to keep him. It's still not settled between the two sides. But it was fascinating and, you know... Um, there's still people who think that like him and Obari can't coexist. And what does that mean for with Obari? You know, they just dumped a president. So I don't know if, you know, how quick do you want to dump another president? Is that, is that going to happen? Especially in very tumultuous times because the company's in, you know, a very weird state. It's not back stable to where it was a couple of years ago. And they got to, you know, everyone expects it to, you know, it's got to get back and they blame COVID, but there's more to this than COVID, you know, but until COVID is, until they're back to cheering and booing, we don't know where they... We know, we know they're probably lower, but we really don't know where they are. Like these attendance figures, which is what they're judged completely on as attendance figures. These attendance figures are not representative because, you know, who wants to go to wrestling and not cheer and boo? You know, I mean, a large percentage of the audience. And then you also got to build that momentum back with all the wrestlers and everything. So we're in a wait period. Um, but the, yeah... A lot of a lot of stuff's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out over the next couple of months. G one's going to be really big this year and really important, I think, to see like where are we and what can we do a G one like we did three four years ago when it was the talk of wrestling. Um, if they get some AEW folks in there, I think it will be again. Yeah, but can you know? I don't know if can AEW, you do the schedule with with AEW? Do you want your guys gone a month though? I mean, you could you could let two guys go and certainly like Wheeler Yuta going for Super Juniors. That's no problem. They're going to do fine without Wheeler Yuta, but do they really want to go? I mean, Moxley and Danielson are like two of the biggest stars in that company. And, um, you know, do they really want to go a month without the two of them? I, I would say not this year, and, like, they'll have to beg. But, I mean, obviously we you know... You could get them to cut promos from Japan. You could, promo-wise, you could, and you can build them up for a month. And and the TV won't die without them if you if you do that. But, yeah, you're right. The idea of doing promos from Japan. And and when they come back, then the crowd yeah. will be so crazy for them being back. That's true, too. That's true, too. You Maybe can, that decision would have been made a lot easier if Omega was still, you know, if he was back, if he didn't get hurt, you know. And you, because you, you have, have him more, on the more, more, more depth. start. Yeah, 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 yeah more depth. That's true. The thing true. Because, because it's like, yeah, you have your, your few key guys, which are, you know, your punk and, and um, those guys, and you, you know, they went without, what was it, the three guys they were gone at the same time it was with Omega and... um um was a john and um who was the other one it was i don't really remember who it was now um that was injured but they 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 had that period where they were kind of like um you know they were waiting to get everybody back and then when moxley came back it kind of you know everything kind of started getting back to normal and they're, you know omega would back when he'll, when he's back and i don't think it's going to be any time that soon but we'll see all right well we're gonna head off to dinner Thanks to Dave. Thanks to Brian. For Andrew, I'm Double G. See you when we see you. Peace out.
Sweet. I got in one minute early.